Welcome back everyone. Bullying, commonly defined as unwanted and aggressive, repetitive behavior that involves a real or perceived power imbalance, has essentially existed since the beginning of time. However, with so many more outlets of communication available right at our fingertips, recent studies show bullying in K-12 through schools has actually taken on a life of its own. So scary. Ahead of Anti-Bullying Day, we thought we should bring in parenting expert and our friend Susan Morley to discuss what we can do to be a part of the solution. Welcome back. Thank you so much for having me. Of course, I'm so glad you're here. And you know, let's talk first and foremost yeah. about some of the statistics. Really scary now, especially because of social media. Yeah, so first of all, anyone who's bullied, they the, the effects of bullying are often compounded and they last even after the bullying stops. Right. So it is very, very serious. Right. And we know that 160,000 students every day miss school because of bullying in this country. Oh my God. It's a huge, huge number. But even, listen, two thirds of, stu of the victims, they become bullies themselves. Oh God. But here's the good news. When a school puts an anti-bullying program in place, they see reductions of bullying up to 50%. Right. So that's really important to get those programs in the school. Absolutely. And what's the nature of the bullying specifically today? I know back in the day, you know, I had a boy picking on me or maybe uh, if it was two boys, they might be physical picking on violence. But what is it today? Is it more cyber or is it kind of the old school things that we were used to? Yeah, well, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, I think it is both. Unfortunately, those old school bullying, it's still there. So I don't think that's going away necessarily. But then we have the added component of the cyber bullying. So the day, the bullying, like what we consider old school bullying, that really happens during the day and in school. Right. But the cyberbullying, it's really 24 seven, but mostly it's at night when the kids come home and they're logging in and they're seeing those comments. Oh, it's, it's awful. Terrible. All right, and let's talk about how you say that bullying is different from just teasing. Uh, explain that. Yeah, so I think this is important. So there's four things you wanna look for, and you mentioned it in the opening. There's gonna be a power differential. So the bully is gonna have power, whether it's physical, like you said, or even just a social power over the victim. So that's the first thing. Um, something else is that bullies will use fear to control their victims. Right. So the, the victims are really, truly frightened. Um, also, it's repetitive. It's so awful. the bully is picking on this child over and over and over again. And lastly, there are always witnesses. Now what we call these witnesses is bystanders. So there's always an audience for the bully. Sure, yes, that, that's probably what fills them up. And, and gives them even more power. Exactly. Yeah, oh, it's just awful. And so what should parents do if they suspect that their child is being bullied? Okay, so first, you definitely wanna stay calm and you wanna get as much information as possible in a calm way. Right. So you're gonna wanna take some notes. But once you have the facts, you're gonna wanna go to your school. And I suggest start with your teacher. Give it a couple weeks. If you don't see a, something really changing, go to the principal. Right. Give it a couple weeks. Again, if nothing's changing, you still have recourses. You go to the superintendent. You have to wait longer. But if the school system is not doing anything, you can go to the United States um, Office of Civil Rights, and eventually you may have to, it's rare, but you sure. may have to secure an attorney. And uh, let's talk about um, the bystanders. So if a student is aware of it, and mm -hmm. they're not doing anything to stop it. I mean, you know, short of putting themselves in harm's way, them, I mean, we don't want that, but I, I mean, nowadays, what are you seeing about students actually participating to, to make it end and, right. and standing up for the person being bullied? Right, so really, there's a lot that you can teach your child to do so that they're like a good citizen, we'll call yes. it, right? So a bystander, as I said, is a witness to bullying, but an upstander, is a witness to bullying who takes an action. And there are lots of actions they can take. So for example, like if you you can teach your child, listen, if you witness bullying, you can interject and start asking the bully questions and you're interrupting the bullying, right? right. You can, if your child's funny, you can say, look, use your hum humor, humor, make a joke, right? The other thing a, a bully, I mean, an, an upstander can do is if they see other bystanders, they can form a little group right. and together interrupt it. Right. And two more things that are, that are important. Number one, first of all, reporting is not tattling. So you need to teach your child, yes. if you report this, you're not being a tattletale. Right. But you can walk with the child, 
to classes, from classes or to home, and check in. Just send a little text to the victim saying, hey, how are you? Check in with that child. That really can help. Absolutely, and in the short amount of time we have, I, I think this is so important. We would never want to think it was our child, but what if our child is the bully? Okay, really quickly. First of all, this is super, super serious because bullies who don't get help they their outcomes for their future is very low in like all the way up to ending up in jail so you oh want to protect your child so you have to i call it mom in the mirror you're going to want to check your family system yes. you might have to hire a therapist or a parent coach to come in and help you with better communication skills you want to address this immediately you want to make sure there are firm and clear boundaries around all aggressive behavior you need to make sure you're communicating with the school and set and maybe give consequences if they break those firm boundaries. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much, Susan. Always Thank you. love having you. And it's such an important topic. And once again, you can find great parenting tips and advice at Susan's website, which is parentcoachatlanta.com. Again, it's parentcoachatlanta.com. And this whole segment will be up on our Atlanta and Company a website, atlantaandcompany.com. If you even want to show your child, I think it's imperative yeah. that we do just that um, for more information to arm them with the right tools they need. So thank you so much. Thanks, Christine. So important.